All BladeBridge configurations are funded by partners on behalf of end user projects and are not an endorsement by BladeBridge or its team members. Welcome to BladeBridge's demo of Informatica Power Center to Azure Data Factory conversion. BladeBridge is a company that specializes in ELT and ETL tool conversions from legacy to new systems. If you're familiar with our portal or if you've seen it or if you haven't, you know that we have prepackaged converter demos. Among them is the Informatica Power Center to ADF converter, and we'll be going over it today. Uh, when you download the zip file, you'll get these contents. You have a log file which uh, will generate automatically once you run converter. We have info to any executable, which is available in this demo, but also on our portal, we have it available for download and as well as with some release note information. We have a couple of bat files, a start demo shell bat, which gets our root directory, and an info to ADF bat, which runs the converter. We have this Excel file, which is from our analyzer product that allows us to generate keys, which uh, these are the keys, info to ADF keys, which we use to plug into converter to allow us to run the conversion. We have an input folder with an Informatica uh, XML export from Informatica repository, which contains information on mappings and workflows. We also have an output ADF uh, folder, which is blank, but we're gonna populate this when we convert. We have some configs as well. The main config, and another config that it uses. Uh, let's start off by looking at the configs. In general, all of our converters use config files, usually specified with the use switch. We'll go over switches later. The configs allow conversion to be configurable and allow the client to configure information quickly without recompiling an executable. For example, in this case, we can specify the factory name and the resource group that we're gonna convert to. In addition, we have certain structures that are configurable, but that also have dynamic variables that can be substituted, usually denoted by double percents. And this will go into our JSON structure, which we will convert, the ADF JSON structure that we will then, we can import into ADF. Looking through this config a little more, we have some source and target attributes. We have uh, import commands. So in for this conversion specifically, in addition to converting the files, we will also get the import commands that we need to import the JSON files that we get into ADF. Uh, additionally, from here, we have workflow specifications. So in addition to mappings, we also convert orchestration or workflows in this case. And we also have some more configuration on the JSON structure, uh, again, with dynamic variables. If we look at the secondary info to ADF JSON file, which this file references, we can look at different substitutions, uh, such as line substitution and function substitution. These substitutions use regex to find and replace certain strings that, that we can find in the conversion process, as well as certain data type casting. Next, we can look at the bat files. So as mentioned before, the star demo shell bat file simply sets the root directory. Next, the input to ADF bat file kicks off conversion with command line switches. To get a little more information on these switches, I'm going to run our converter without any switches. So to do that, I'm going to just drag info to any exe. And we get some information. So to begin with, the C switch asks for a license file, which is in this case, this file, the text file. Uh, then we have to specify either the I or the D switch. The I switch expects a single file, such as an XML file, or the D switch expects a folder with multiple XML files in that folder. We have the end switch, which is for the output folder, in this case, output ADF. We have the M switch, which specifies the target technology that we would like to convert to. In this case, the info to any converter also supports SQL, PySpark, Databricks, and Snowpark conversions in addition to ADF. Then there are some other optional switches that are specified in square brackets. Among those switches is a use switch right here, which we will use to specify the JSON file. In this case, input to ADF main. So just to go over it again, we have a license file, the input folder, the output folder. We specify ADF as our target technology. We reference the config file. 
And we specify also a log file. And V is verbose. So that is where we get this log from. With that out of the way, I'm going to run conversion. So the first step is to run the start demo shell bat, which is just going to fetch our root directory. And next, I'm going to run info to ADF bat. Now, as this is running, we'll see that the converter gives us the command line switches that we will actually need to use in order to import the JSON files that we get out of this conversion and import it directly into Azure Data Factory using the CLI. Looking a little closer at these switches, we see that we're converting three types of items. The first one is a data set, which uh, contains a schema of columns and their types for sources and targets. Uh, we also convert data flows, which are the equivalent of mappings in this case. We see that we're converting multiple mappings, so we have a section for each mapping. And finally, we're converting pipelines, which are the equivalent of workflows in this case. If we were to look at the outputs, we'll see that these files now get generated. As you notice, the red turned into an X. We have import commands, which are not necessary uh, when it comes to importing, but we use them for convenience. So you have access to the import command for each of these files. And here we just have, in this case, some information. This one is a data set, and we have a schema with some columns and their types and some other information. Uh, we also converted a, a mapping. We converted multiple, but this is one. If we look into the mapping, we also have an import command. We have the parameters for the actual mapping itself, such as expressions and uh, column information and as well as lineage information, so pointing to nodes. If we look a little uh, further, we have sinks and sources, so some information on sources and targets. Finally, if we look at a workflow, we have some more information, again, import command, and we have some information on the nodes as well as lineage. Uh, in addition, we have some hard-coded parameters. I have already imported these files into Azure Data Factory. So we'll take a look at what that looks like. First, let's look at a workflow. So we have an init test input node. We have uh, as well some mappings that contain the mapping name, some parameters, and um, the name of the data flow that we are referencing. We also have some conditionals. And based on those, some more calls to mappings and an end node. If we look at an example uh, data set, we have a schema. Uh, we, we also have connection information uh, with the link service that we would like and some more information. We have schema that has the columns and the types. If we look at an example mapping, we'll see sources, expressions, joiners, and targets. So for example, we have a data set source. We have an expression with columns and types. We have a joiner node that specifies the type of join. And again, we have columns types. If we look a little further, we have our target, which again specifies data sets, a table name, um, as well as some, again, types, columns. We can look at the equivalents in Power Center as well. So for this mapping, the equivalent would be this test mapping one, which we, which we just converted. We have sources, expressions, joiners, and targets. We also have the equivalent for the workflow, where we have the mappings through sessions, some decision nodes, uh, some more mappings, and an end. That concludes the demo. Thank you for listening.